Hey everybody, we're back with another installment of our Augsburg Confession Study. We are on page 14 of your Blue Book of Concord, if you've got one. We are studying Article 14, and this one is of ecclesiastical order. Of ecclesiastical order, they teach that no one should publicly teach in the church or administer the sacraments unless he be regularly called. That's it. Pretty brief. However, the church has got to get this one right because this isn't just a pious rule that the church made up a long time ago, uh, that men only men who are rightly called should preach. This is something that we find in the Holy Scriptures. In the Old Testament and in the New, you see God calling men specifically to perform the office of the ministry, to perform Christ's office, to give out God's gifts, to do the teaching, to do the preaching, etc. What you also see then, especially in the Old Testament, is when men try to usurp the office of the ministry, uh, then that leads to trouble. Uh, when so, so think about how often the Israelites grumble against Moses, and then they try to put someone else up. They say, well, if Moses can lead, why can't we lead? Uh, but that wasn't the case. It wasn't that anyone could have led Israel because Moses was the one whom God had specifically put in that spot. The same thing with Joshua after him, Aaron and his sons as the high priests, etc. And we also see this in the New Testament. The ones who, whom Christ calls, those are the ones that you look to then. Uh, those whom Christ doesn't call, those are the usurpers of the office, uh, and they're not to be listened to. Now, what does this mean? Uh, really, uh, or rather, I guess, let, let's back away from that for just a moment. Then. We see this in two big places in the scripture, by way, not just of example of description, but prescription. If you go to Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, and I don't have my reference here anymore, but right in the middle of Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah 23 is the Lord condemning the false prophets. Specifically, he says, right in the middle of that chapter, I did not send these prophets, and yet they ran. Uh, and the implication throughout all this chapter is, these false prophets, these ones whom I, the Lord, did not call, they have a false word for you. They're speaking in my name, but I never told them to speak. They're running to their pulpit, so to speak, but I never gave them a pulpit. I never told them to run, and yet they're preaching anyway. And the Lord condemns this, because what this does is, uh, if there is no call from God, <clears throat> excuse me, men are more likely, uh, almost 100% likely, to end up not teaching their own, or rather not teaching God's word, but rather teaching their own words and calling it God's word. So it goes back to the second, uh, second commandment issue of misusing the name of the Lord for teaching the opinions of man uh, as the word of God, teaching the traditions of man as the word of God, etc. So, uh, also, we go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, uh, and here we have you know, some of the greatest verses here about uh, the gospel and its spread and how it spread, but it specifically says, Paul says, I believe it's in verse 15 there, and how will they hear uh, if they don't have a preacher, and how will they preach if they are not sent? It doesn't say, how will they preach if they don't decide to get up and do it one day, uh, but it's they have to be sent in both cases, in Jeremiah and in Romans chapter 10. The calling is a passive thing. The Lord does the calling, the man receives the call, the end. The man is never the one that initiates the call. So now, how does this play out in our own day? Because it says specifically then uh, that no one ought to preach publicly in the church or administer the sacraments unless he be regularly called. In a lot of the Lutheran synods, there's a lot of hubbub about what regularly called means. Uh, and really, it means, are you called through the church, through the regular way that the church has always called men into the office of the ministry. So what doesn't this mean? This doesn't mean that you get to wake up one morning and say, I feel the Lord calling me to start a church. That's not the Lord. There's plenty of churches out there, believe me. We don't need another one. What we need, then, are churches, congregations of saints, to extend calls to men. That's how men are called. Now, we can go off on another little subcategory here, something that I think uh, we don't teach enough in, and that is the difference between a immediate call and a mediate call. Uh, immediate, uh, immediate meaning by means or through means or instruments. Immediate meaning without instruments. The immediate call, that's how, uh, that's how the prophets are called. God just zaps the prophets and they have this experience and you see God in some form or other and it's, okay, you're going to be my prophet, Isaiah. And Isaiah says, okay, here I am, send me, send me, etc. Uh, that's immediate. 
mediate is through means. And that's what we see in the church then, because God doesn't just whack people on the head anymore and give them ecstatic visions and tell them, hey, you need to go start this church down the road, or hey, I'm calling you into the ministry. He also doesn't give people a warm feeling that uh, is to be interpreted as a divine call into the ministry. Then He works through means, and that means, he works through means, that means, haha, that uh, he's going to work through the church. So just as God gives salvation through the preaching of the word, through holy baptism, through the confession of sins to give the, uh, the absolution of sins, through the Lord's Supper, so he works through the church to issue a call. So congregations, bodies of saints gather together around the word and the sacrament. Christ calls men through congregations. So if the congregation has not issued you a call, you don't have a call. The end. Uh, and there is a regular way of doing this. That regular way of doing this, if we go back to uh, you know, what this means to be regularly called, part of that also means uh, that you have to be educated about this. You have to have studied with the Lord. Think about the apostles. They are not sent out until they have three years of seminary with Jesus. You know, tuition free for the most part, I believe. And what this means is, you don't just, again, you don't just get to wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to preach. Hey, I'm going to start a church. Also, even in established congregations, this is why guys just don't stand up and say, hey, I would like to be an assistant lay preacher or something like that. You have to know what you're talking about. St. Paul says to Timothy, and he also says to Titus when he's talking about the descriptions, uh, the duties, and also the requirements of the office of the ministry. He's always saying they have to be apt to teach. They have to be able to teach. Because if they're not, they're worthless as shepherds. That's the chief tool. Uh, with the scriptures is you have to be able to teach and preach the gospel. Uh, and so in order to do that, you have you have to yourself be taught and be a, a perpetual student of these things. Uh, so that's why congregations even can't just say, hey, the pastor's going on vacation this week. Let's issue a call to you know that guy in the back pew and he'll cover for the pastor while he's gone. That gets into other issues, uh, you know, ancillary to this. But again, it's the issue of a call is done a proper, there is a proper and specific way which the church has always done the call. If you want to look for a biblical example of this, go to Acts chapter 6 when the deacons are called. And, you know, as we've gone from la, uh, from a previous ATP video, yes, I believe the deacons were ordained uh, because you, otherwise, you know, why are they having their hands laid upon, uh, the apostles' hands laid on them and all this other sort of stuff? Go watch that ATP video. But you see there, uh, these men aren't just, you know, picked at random, but the apostles say, y'all, congregation, pick seven men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit, and then we'll lay our hands on them and ordain them into the ministry, and then they'll take care of this aspect, the charitable aspect of the ministry. So there's an orderly fashion to it. It's not just people picking, being chosen at random. It's people who are, who meet certain requirements being chosen and then called and ordained. They're chosen and they're put into that office. So that's what regularly called means. Uh, there can be some variance with it, but really there has to be a, there has to be training. There has to be a calling from God that is through the church. And then there has to be an ordination by which those men are placed into the office to which they're called. Uh, now, what, what's really at stake here? Well, first of all, what's at stake is, do we believe the word of God in Jeremiah and Romans chapter 10? The secondary thing that's at stake here is certainty. Think about in the Old, in, uh, the Old Testament. Uh, how did you know which prophets to listen to? Well, the ones which are truly called. Uh, and you listen to their teaching and to determine that. The same thing is true of the New Testament teachers and ministers of the gospel, the pastoral office, the office of the holy ministry, then, is if they don't have a call into the ministry, a legitimate call, uh, something that they can prove to you, then you ought not to listen to them. You know, if you've got Luther's works or access to it, uh, there's something that he wrote uh, some time ago about uh, infiltrating and clandestine preachers. That's a really good uh, place to start if you want to learn more about this, because Luther basically says, hey, if they don't have a call, you don't need to be listening to them. So for any preacher that you hear, you ought to be able to ask him, where's your call to preach? And if he just says, well, the Lord has laid it upon my heart, <clears throat> don't listen to him. He should be able to show you, ideally, a piece of paper from this congregation that says, this is my official call document. They have called me. Rather, Christ has called me through the instrument of this congregation, just like he has ever since Acts chapter 1 with Matthias and Acts chapter 6 with St. Stephen 
and the other six deacons then. Uh, so we don't just do it willy-nilly. There is a regular order for this thing, and it protects the certainty of the gospel that we know for sure that God has placed this man here to forgive our sins, this man here to teach us the gospel, this man to shepherd us with the word of God and the word of God alone. That's Article 14 of Ecclesiastical Order. Just a one little housekeeping bit. We're going to take a break for Christmas. We'll be back with ATP and with our Augsburg Confession Study after the 1st of January. We'll see you then, or rather, actually, we'll see you next year.